Right, no doubt you've arrived at this uh, video by seeing these two beauties uh, filled up with most of what you see on the table here because today I'm going to make a classic beef and onion pie. In fact I'm going to make two because I can. Right, let's talk about the uh, beef. Um, you can you can buy the the your beef already cut up into cubes, but I don't find that particularly good value for money. You see, I was able to pick up this beef roasting joint, and it's a really good quality one, 21 day matured beef. It's the best part of a kilogram, and it only cost me five pound twenty six, which is I think I think is really good value. I picked that up in uh, in Aldi. That does me for a nice uh, pie filling. Uh, I'm going to cook it for quite a long time because I want to get the, the meat really tender to go in the pie and uh, we'll take it from there. So first thing I need to do is get this and the stock vegetables all chopped up uh, so we can get it cooking uh, and get stewing down that beef till it's nice and tender. Oh, I can't be bothered with the onion, I'll do it this way. So that's the uh, veg prepped up, the stock veg prepped up, and uh, now we'll get on with the meat. So uh, first I'm cutting the uh, joint along its length into strips. Um, comme ça. Uh, and then I'm cutting it into pieces that are no bigger than uh, my thumb, because we want it to cook and present nicely inside the pie. So I'm gonna finish prepping this up, uh, and then we'll get back to you. Right, that's got the meat cut up into little uh, cubes, about three quarter of an inch cubes. And I'm just going to sprinkle on a bit of uh, flour. Just going to sprinkle on a bit of flour. About a tablespoon of flour, maybe a little bit more. Um, this is uh, just white flour, ordinary all-purpose flour. It's actually strong white bread flour, but um, we don't need to pick nits. And then I'm going to just massage that into the meat. Now, the reason we do this is uh, it protects the texture of the meat while the meat is browning, while it's cooking off in the fat. And also, later on, it will form part of the thickening of the pie filling of this of the sauce in the pie filling and that is now ready to fry so uh, what we'll do is we'll get uh, the camera set up over the uh, pot and we'll show you that okay into the pot goes a couple of tablespoons of oil and straight in with the meat because we've got a good strike heat going because the pot's really hot and you'll hear that sizzle as it hits. Right, um, once we've got a nice seal on that meat, in go all the stock veg. And we give that a stir and we let it fry for a minute or two um, to release some of the sugars in the stock veg and some of the flavor from that onion. And you'll see right here that we're introducing a little colour as well as flavour. Um, if I don't think that's brown enough at the end of this, I will probably add a little dark soy sauce to it, which will add a nice element of flavour and uh, a lot of colour. Right, I think at this stage, um, you notice I haven't added any salt at this stage. And that's because I don't want to draw too much moisture out of, out of the meat until uh, it's properly sealed. And I think we're now at that stage where I can smell the onion um, is starting to sweeten. So at this stage, I'm gonna go in with some pepper and some salt. Not too much salt at first, because I, I, I really just want to get, say, a pinch of salt going in there. And I need some black pepper. That is creating some interesting flavours right there in that pot. So right now, stock. It just so happens that I have some stock made up. And this is a, a meat stock. 
made up of uh, chicken and pork and now it's going into this beef and that turns out to be just about the right amount so if I look there it was 600 mils 600 mils what's that in the old money let's have a look it's about a pint so 600 mils about a pint in the old money and that just tops it up nicely so there we go we've got the meat more or less covered and the element that we need to give it now uh, boys and girls and gastronauts is time so I'm going to cover that with a lid turn the heat right down and give that about an hour and a half two hours let that meat go real tender um, and thicken up slightly so there you go on with the lid all right, uh, here's the two pie dishes which I've uh, uh, greased uh, with a bit of butter. Right, okay, this is all about having fun. It's about eating, it's about how much you live, not how long you live. <laughs> all right, um, right, I'm gonna get some um, pastry now which I've made in the time-honored fashion of going to my local store and buying it. Um, they've got the time to do it, they make it rather well, so I buy it. I think that's a pretty good deal, don't you? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two of these rolls, because I can, and there we go. And as you see, one of those rolls will do a pie in the lid. And what I want to do is I just want to measure that up to see how much I'm going to need, because we are going to need a bit more the inner bit. So there you go, that was simple wasn't it? So now I take the, this bit and I press that into the pie bolt. Remember what I did with the other pies, I lift it up and drop it in rather than try forcing the other stuff from the outside. And then literally just fold that over the sides like that to form a nice base and there you go keep the lid to one side because we don't want that drying off do we not too much so we'll put that to one side for now and then I'll do the other one there you go so that's some uh, done and ready pressed down all the air pushed out and there's one little thing I like to do in the bottom of my pies is I just sometimes just stab the bottom like that and apparently it stops the pie going soggy in the bottom. I don't see any evidence of it but I do it because I do it. So there we are we've got two uh, pie cases set up and raring to go. Okay I've uh, just uh, so that it doesn't all dry out and to keep any insects from getting on it I've covered it with a little cling wrap uh, just for the time being and the only other ingredient we'll need is an eggy weggy and I'll show you that's just for it really dressing the edges of the pie and painting the top of the pie so it, it gives it a nice sheen so I'll get back to you now once the filling is ready to go into the pies all right now it's time to check the meat let's have a look um, I'm just going to take a bit from the side Taste it. Mm. Okay, that's great for tender. It's just about right. Uh, nice and yielding. Right. It's not cooked to the point where it's falling apart because uh, I do like to actually have the meat pie have a little bit of texture. And I think it needs a little bit more salt and a little bit more black pepper, a bit more crab fat jack. Right, the other thing I notice is that the uh, stock is very, very loose. So I've mixed uh, two tablespoons of flour with some water. You can also mix it with a bit of oil, but make sure you mix it so all the lumps are, are gone and then get that in there good old stir. We want to get that 
nice and thick. We want that to thicken up nicely. You bring it up to the desired consistency and if it doesn't come up to the desired consistency, just add a little more. So let's get this going. And plenty of filling. Get plenty of filling in there. So a nice generously filled pie. And let's do the other one. Okay, so there we are. We have two rather generously filled pies. And the next uh, process uh, will be to um, just wet the edges of these pies so that they seal nicely. And I'm doing that with a bit of beaten egg. Very straightforward. Get in there, just wet the edges. Don't need to be too fancy with it, just get it done. This will help form a seal. It's not too attractive when the pie bursts open and it all spills out. But that can happen and does happen. So now we take our lids and carefully drop them into place on top of the pipe and you see that fits nicely and just push that down with your fingers pulling away from the centre of the pipe. You see like that, just slightly pulling away. That stretches the top nice and tight and we'll do the same with the pie number two. And this is puff pastry, don't forget. Now what I like to do is I like to go around the edges with a fork like that and we go around the pie like that. Just go around the rim of the pie. Both pies are now sealed up um, and what I do now is I take the back of a knife and just run it along the outside. Just cut it in a downward stroke like you see there until we have a very professional looking pie. And then you just need to put a couple of air holes in the top of the pie. Right, the last thing we do before putting those on a tray and into our oven is we give those a quick brush with Eggy Weggy. Uh, you can be generous with this um, because it does look rather good once finished. So get that on and there you go, that's, it. that's them brushed and ready to go in the oven. Right, they go into a, let's get it on my pizza plate. They go, in, I put them on a tray and they go into an oven at 180 degrees um, Celsius, which is 350, around about 350 Fahrenheit. And they will bake for around about 40 to 45 minutes. And we shall uh, have a look at it after say 30 minutes and see how they're getting on. So that, my dear friends and gastronauts, is a classic British steak pie. Um, I think I'm going to cut into one, let you see it. Okay, um, let's cut into this one, shall we? Uh, take it across there. Can you hear that? That's the crispiness of it. Oops. <laughs> and that, my dear friends, is a classic British steak pie. Now, does that look gorgeous or what? <laughs> right, I'm going to enjoy eating that now, so uh, please forgive me.